Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to ATM Spellbound. I was actually waiting for the rain to stop because I was about to start recording and then of course the rain started and I was like, eh, I gotta wait for this. Uh, but anyways, I have done a bit of building between episodes, spent a little bit of time. Um, I did go ahead and set up this little area here. If you want to say, and it's not completely done, but if you want to say what it looks like, it's not kind of just floating there. It's got these pillars uh, that I did with sooty marble that come up. Uh, this is actually Midnight Glass from the Blue Skies that I used uh, here and in a couple other spots. But this, of course, is going to be where our uh, Starlight Infuser is going to be. And we're going to be getting that set up here in just a moment. But this is, is the multi-block. There's the top of the pillars uh, that come up there. And then I did put some framed trapdoors here for our Starlight, even though we're going to automate placing that uh, here fairly soon. But... Uh, Probably this episode, maybe. But this way we do have manual access if we need it. Also set up some places that are going to be starlight collector crystals and kind of space them out. So there's one up there, one over there, one here. And we'll be pushing on to those, maybe this episode. And I set up a, a few little, like, kind of little work areas. I also put the astral snowberries. Astral and astral sorcery are different mods, of course. Uh, but I put those up here. Uh, just for fun because I had, you know, I had Astral pulled up and I was like, oh yeah, I've got some Snowberries. Let me place those uh, down in here. And I, and it won't place on Lunar Grass, by the way. If you try to play, place it on Lunar Grass, you will eat it. So uh, you do have to put it on grass. And then an, another collector over here. This is actually going to be the location where the stairs come up and it actually connects onto this rooftop or one of the one of the spots where it comes up and uh let's see over here i started i started framing this in but not entirely done with it also one small small change that i did do is right down here i backed this comparator off because it was working fine last episode uh, but i noticed after i logged off uh, to render the video and i logged back on it was no longer shutting this off uh, and it was actually running uh, but you can see that now uh, it has powered this off uh, it had actually backed up as you can see it had actually backed up on liquid starlight uh, so we probably wasted a little bit of aquamarine but i'm not terribly concerned about that <laughs> i have a full tank of liquid starlight so uh, i'm glad for that uh, also we have 127 aquamarine shale in the system at the moment so we've got plenty of that available uh, so anyways, what we are going to do today, let's go ahead, it is not nighttime, let me pull this out and let me turn it nighttime. I'm actually probably just going to hold on to the star metal cutting tool for today. I need, I still need to put unbreakable, I repaired it, but I need to put unbreakable on it. But I'm probably going to let it keep, keep it as night today, uh, since we're going to be doing some astro sorcery and we will want night uh, pretty much non-stop today. So, but you can see it's working perfectly. I love it. Our stuff that we set up last episode, it's going to be extremely helpful for this episode. It's going to come in very, very handy. All right, so there we go. We're going to go ahead, click that, and we can get our Starlight Infuser. It's like it's so much easier to craft when I can just say nighttime. Always keep it nighttime when I'm doing Astral Sorcery. And I don't even have to... It's even easier than having to, like, sleep. You know, I can just... I don't even have to, like, touch it. It's just going to stay nighttime for us all the time. There we go. There is our Starlight Infuser. And we'll go ahead and set this up right here. And then at this point, uh, let me go ahead and let me just get another Ender Tank for now. Uh, I want it to be a white one. And we're just going to set this up like right here. Because that's going to have our Liquid Starlight in it. And uh, did we not get our... I think it left it in here. Let me turn this off for now because uh, we're not going to want that interfering with everything uh, that we're doing until we get this stuff set up. It's weird because I've noticed Astral Sorcery, none of the recipes have consumed the Liquid Starlight. Um, it's like it, it's almost like it, it just wants to know that you can make it or something. I don't know. I, I think it's a bug. I don't think it's intended. Because, uh, you know, in the past, it would always empty the bucket. But for some reason, it's just not... It's just not doing it. 
and we're going to go ahead and fill this up with some liquid starlight around it. And then we can take our aquamarine and we can just pop that in, right click it. There we go. There we go. There is our very first resonating gem. Let's go ahead and make a couple of these. Uh, one of our first objectives today is going to be going for the iridescent altar because it's going to open up uh, pretty much everything <laughs> at that point. Um, and we'll be able to get like the observatory. I think, I think we need that to get the observatory, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, it looks like uh, liquid starlight got consumed somewhere. Looks like right there. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and just get a few more of these. I'm going to go ahead and do like, I think I'm going to go ahead and get like 16 uh, at the moment. Yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go ahead and get 16 resonating gems. That way we've got a bit, because uh, we're gonna be using a few today, and that should give us enough that we don't have to worry about resonating gems for a little bit until we uh, get this liquid starlight set up for kind of automatic refilling. Um, okay, now at this point, let me go ahead and actually just go ahead and get another Ender Tank, another white, white, white one. And this one, we're going to be setting it up right back here. We'll have it sitting right there, let's say. And we're going to make our very first Celestial Crystal. So let's take... Um, okay, I got six picked out. Let's go ahead now. Take our Liquid Starlight and just kind of fill this in. Because uh, we're going to be making a few Celestial Crystals to get started. And... Uh, Wait, not Aquamarine, I need Stardust. Let's grab that. And also, let's take off our Magnetic Ring. Uh, now, we could always do some Dynamism Gems. We will. Uh, but it's actually not a big rush for us at the moment. Because I don't think they're actually used... No, nope, they're not used for anything in this pack. They're just going to be for uh, our uh, Gem Sockets. So we can wait on that. Uh, but let's go ahead and toss those in. So there. Now, right now, I don't have a collector crystal set up, of course. So these are just going to, they're going to take a little while to grow. Uh, so we'll just kind of have to wait for them uh, to get grown at this point. But that's fine. Uh, but actually, oh, it takes all the modium. Yeah. We could, we could actually go mine that fairly easily, to be honest. And you'll notice that down there I do have iron ore underneath this. Uh, that's because we're going to be turning this into star metal later. Um, and keeping it turned into star metal just to kind of help grow these a bit faster. Uh, but for right now it doesn't really, it's not important <laughs> at all. And since we can keep it night at this point it's going to help grow these a bit faster because uh, like during the day they're really not going to do much of anything. So... That's another benefit to getting our night system in place. And then once they start kind of like glowing and like light particles coming off of them, then we'll know that they're ready to harvest. But while we're waiting, let me see. All the modium is the one that's under oceans, right? Do we have... Uh... Yeah, it's under under oceans. Yeah, I actually might go... Because I've got a little bit of time here. I might go out... And uh, see about getting some all the modium. I think we've got two nuggets. We're actually going to be setting up some automation for that pretty soon. And I had intended to have it set up by now, but uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, Distant North Village actually is pretty close to an ocean back over here, if I recall. This map mod tends to be extremely slow to load, and it's really, really laggy. Like, if I zoom out, it's just like... <laughs> um, I don't know if it has to do with the overworld or what. It's mainly It mainly happens in the overworld. Like, I never chug like this. And after a minute, it's not, it's not loading in the world. It's the map loading. Like, it is the worst performance map that I have ever seen. It's extremely performance <laughs> intensive whenever it's trying to load... Uh, like I said, it's mainly the old... Well, no, I take that back, because it does it in uh, Alfheim, too. Blue Skies, it doesn't do it in. Um, I don't know if it's because I haven't flown that far out in uh, 
blue skies, but it's almost it's almost unusable in the overworld, at least zoomed out, you know. Like, I may end up uh, switching map mods at some point. Um, actually, oh, you know what? I went by one of these... Uh, no, this is one of the Desert Temples, not uh, Guardian Temple. I went by Guardian Temple between episodes because I needed some Prismarine uh, for the build for Astral Sorcery area. But uh, we're going to have to do a Guardian Temple pretty soon, though. Because we haven't uh, we haven't officially done one. I was able to just... I just went over there to get Prismarine. And I was able to bypass the mining fatigue with... Um... Oh, I should probably back up. Not like we need these that much, but... Within this pack, but... Boom. And technically, this is low enough down. I'm going to grab our... Bewitch Shell Necklace. And that way I can just walk around in here. Uh, but I was able to bypass the mining the mining fatigue with uh, with our break spell. So I didn't have to worry about that. I'm actually going to grab these while I'm down here. These uh, embedded ammonites in case I want to build with them or something. Oh, I love this like underwater cave because it doesn't really impact me because I can just breathe. And uh, oh wow. That's not something you see every day. Two of those right next to each other. Um, but we can look for some Aldemodium while we give our crystals a little bit of time to grow. And then we might be able to get ourselves a, a time in the bottle. Or a time in a bottle. Up and going today. Um, because we could always use tick speed increases to speed up our uh, crystal growth. Oh, we got Nautilus. Which actually, that's a great source for Nautilus shells in case we want to make uh, some conduits. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just harvest all of these. There's 40 Nautilus shells. We can make a few conduits with that. And let's see, all the modium site is unobtainium and all the modium dust. Uh, so that's something that we'll probably end up making at some point as well. Uh, this stuff, it's not super common, so a site potion is definitely the way to go. Uh, when it comes to finding it. Another option, I guess, is just vein mining everything until we find it. Oh, there we go. We found some, our very first piece of all the modium ore. Uh, now, as far as processing this down, I'm going to actually assume that, yeah, Crusher Spirit can do it. That's great. Now, you can see that technically if we had the miner set up, you know, that we made, that we haven't set up, we would probably be getting all of the, uh, the, all the modium ores, but uh, that's that's part of the reason why I find it a little bit cheesy to go with that, because these ores are technically rare. Now, honestly, the system that we're going to be setting up for it pretty much makes it into a very easy resource, but uh, it at least takes a setup, whereas the miner is pretty much just like, here you go, free, uh, free all the modium and everything else, so... There's a spawner down there with Drowned. Oh, speaking of spawners, uh, something I meant to tell you guys. Uh, down in the... Down where we get all of our source and stuff with the Silverfish spawner, I actually added a second spawner that's behind that main spawner because um, I, I discovered the other day, I went into the create room, and I discovered that uh, I had actually removed all the spawners that were producing bones, and we went from having... A literal ton of bones to having literally no bones and the entire create system was shut down because I had no bones in the system so I set up a uh, skeleton druid spawner from Twilight Forest so we're getting in uh, torch berries and bones from that uh, now because if you recall we had like thousands and thousands of bones and I didn't think about it whenever I changed over a lot of my spawners for uh, like for the silverfish, you know, because it was faster. Uh, I didn't think about it and uh, ended up completely running all the bones out of the system. So, I mean, technically a single ore is enough to do us for time in a bottle. So we may head back. I'm kind of sad that uh, my underwater cave ended. Oh, we got a mimic. I'm going to kill them because they drop artifacts. Oh, we got these snorkel. 
allows the wearer to breathe underwater. Uh, is there a reward? There is not a reward for that. Okay, well let me just, I'm going to manually feed him the all the modium. And there we go, we got six crushed all the modium ore. Uh, and then we can go just smelt this up. There we go, we got our very first all the modium ingots. Uh, okay, so now we should be able to get time in a bottle. There we go, there is our time in a bottle. Okay, and these are pretty close at this point. I went ahead and just AFK'd for just a moment to let some time build up in this. I don't remember what the stats on each of these are, but let's go ahead and speed this up. These back here didn't get lucky. These are pretty close. Um, actually, this one is really close. You can see four little crystal bits that, that have come off of it. Uh, and we're going to take a second here to briefly talk about uh, growing crystals because it is vastly different. Uh, than it used to be. It's actually a lot better. Um, like, for example, you're going to see all these different stats on uh, each of these crystals, and they have different uh, values. The standard rock crystal has a lower cap. Um, I want to say it's like six. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but the celestial crystals have a cap of, I want to say it's ten. I think Celestial's 10. I can't remember Rock Crystal. I want to say it's 6. I don't usually mess with Rock Crystals that much. Well, actually, are there any in here that we've got? That's 5. That's 5. That's 5. That's five. All these are 5 on value, but I think if you... Well, they'd be Celestial if you grew them. Maybe maybe it's 5 is, is the maximum uh, that Rock Crystals can come as. There we go. That one's done. So let's go ahead and pop that one and see what we got. We got uh, Purity 2, Shape 3, Ritual Range 2, and Focus VCO 1. And you can see that it has uh, it has bumped up to like 8 value. I think it can go to 10 though. I, I want to say. Uh, but each thing will have a max value. So for example, Purity, I, I want to say it caps at 2. So that's all we're going to be able to get from this. Um, and... Yeah, and actually, I think this one didn't bump up because uh, these different... Well, Focus VCO can go, I think, up to a 2. Because your Focus is it's going to be to a specific constellation, so it's going to make... Uh, when that constellation's in the sky, it's going to be better. And Purity and Shape are pr still pretty much the same thing in size as well. Uh, purity is still the best stat to go for, uh, as far as if you're wanting something that... Uh, collect stuff. If you want to do the tools, that's going to be like shape, tool durability, tool efficiency, uh, the, the, as far as stats that you're going to want. I don't usually mess with the tools that much because eh, there tends to be better. Uh, actually, yeah, if you look at the tools, those are going to be the stats that you probably want to go for is size, shape, tool durability, and tool efficiency. And if you look at the crystal lens, that's another example. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I never noticed that, to be honest. And collector crystals, yeah, once again, size, purity, shape, collection rate, focus. Uh, all of these are going to be kind of what you want to prioritize for uh, these things. I never noticed that they actually show. That's really convenient. But what we can do, for example, with this celestial crystal, I want, this is actually a pretty good one, but I don't really care to have the ritual range on it. Uh, so what we can do is we can take our star metal cutting tool and we can just toss that down and smack it. And you can see that we have a purity shape and ritual range celestial crystal and we have a purity shape, ritual range, and focus. Now we could throw it down again. And we can smack it again. Uh, and now we have a purity one and a shape one. And so we're starting to break off different parts of this crystal. Uh, into small kind of individual crystals. Uh, so now we have ritual range. Now you'll notice the stat has substantially dropped and actually I think we lost the the focus there but that's fine I'm not that worried about it. And what we can do now is grow these into bigger crystals. Uh, now we're going to want uh, let's see I want to say the cap on stats. I don't know I don't think that the, the stats here are actually obtainable because like I said I think you can only have a maximum of 10 stats on, for example, a Celestial Crystal. I think that's right. Uh, so you kind of have to pick and choose a little bit. Uh, we're probably going to go with 
Uh, we're probably not going to worry about size. We're probably going to go shape, collection, right? Try to get those to three and then go purity and a focus um, because I think that's going to work out best for us. Uh, as far as stats go uh, and as far as using our stats. Um, this one is done. Let's go ahead and pop this one off and see what we got. And we can combine these, which we'll get into in just a moment. This is purity, tool durability, uh, focus. Let's see if we can pull off a focus for this one. Now, technically, you can have multiple focuses on a uh, single crystal. Yeah, we got focus octans, too. Uh, and octans, I wouldn't I wouldn't do a focus for, like, say, Heraldrum, unless you're going to do a ritual, a, a Heraldrum ritual, because it's going to make it a bit better. But ideally, you want to focus on a constellation that... Uh, is up in the night sky quite a bit, so you can see this one has four out of eight uh, of the moon phases that it's up. Uh, so it's a pretty good one to, uh, <clears throat> like for Starlight Collection, Octans is as good as pretty much any other. Uh, so we're going to take that, and uh, do I have a collection right? I do not. That's okay. Let's go ahead at this point, because I'm going to be setting up this crystal for our first Starlight Collection crystal uh, but let's go ahead now and take like shape and purity toss those two in together into some liquid starlight and what's going to happen is they're going to actually combine together to form one crystal and so then we'll have a crystal that has shape and purity on it and then what we can do is take a little bit more liquid starlight toss that in and our focus octans and give it just a second and then that'll combine together and we'll have a crystal that is now purity shape and focus octans uh, which the focus is actually already capped but we need to get the purity up to two the shape up to three i think right uh, yeah and then we still need to get collection right on this because i would like to have some collection right and unfortunately we lost the collection right on that one and this one did not have it uh, but at this point, let's take this tool durability, because like I said, I don't really care about the tools that much. Batania tools are so much better. I love Batania tools. Uh, we're going to take the tool durability and put that in there, and we can use this to make our altar. Uh, it's actually going to take a bit of starlight. I may need to get a crystal uh, up and going before we can actually craft this. Now, something I'm not entirely sure about, if I was to take... Can you even break these? Yeah, you can. Okay. I've never, I've never tried to be honest. Uh, I need the collection right off of this. If you don't mind terribly. There we go. Collection right of one, and we still have a collection right on this one. Uh, let's go ahead. Can I do this and combine a rock crystal with a celestial crystal? Yes, we can. And we got Purity, Shape, Collection, Right, and Focus. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and toss that in and get that one growing because we got the stats on it that we want. Uh, so yeah, we probably just do this with Rock Crystals and get the stats you want and not do the Celestial. And then let's go ahead and do another one to go ahead and, and get another one growing that we're going to want. Yep, Collection, Right. Uh, Pelotrio. I think that one, I think pretty much all of them except for Heraldrum are up. Nope, Pelotrio is a rare one. If it's got question marks, because it means it's probably a bit more rare. Uh, so let's see, do we have a better focus? Actually, I think we've got uh, like Evorcio would be fine. Let's take, let's see if we can pop off an Evorcio. Nope, but we lost it. There we go, we got a Focus Fornax. So we're going to have Focus Fornax Collection Rate, Shape, and Purity. And we'll go ahead and get that going. And at this point, now that we're starting to grow crystals... Uh, we can pretty much use these for crafting, like these little dinky, like, leftovers. We can use those for all of our, like, junk crafting uh, and use and save our uh, bigger crystals with more effects. We can save those for for basically just breaking down for component stats that we want. So I like, I like this system a lot more than, like, the 100 points and you just keep just constantly dumping them into Starlight. Um, because now it's a little bit more fun. Not to mention you can actually use this for duplicating Stardust. So there's that too. Okay, so we've got two Collector Crystals going. Uh, what's going to be our Collector Crystals? Let's see if I can... Uh, I don't know if I want to have another Fornax. 
Can we mix it up just a little bit? And perfect timing. This one's ready to pop off. Let's grab that. And I'm going to go ahead and get our next crystal combined up because we've got purity collection rate. And what's this one? This one is size three, tool efficiency three, collection rate three. Uh, so you can see that one's got nine stat points in there. So yeah, I think it's 10 uh, for the celestial crystals. Okay, so we got purity, shape, collection rate, and boots. Okay, this one just finished up. Uh, but let's go ahead and grab this one. Let's see what we got. We got purity two, shape two, collection rate two, and focus for boots. Uh, so eight points of... I know shape and collection rate can both get a little bit higher. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to throw this back in because I don't want to... Because of course, once we turn it into a collector crystal, we're not going to be able to change it. Once we get one on this collector crystal though, it's going to speed things up a little bit. So hopefully... Uh, this one we got... It was just like, hey, I'm going to put ritual range on this. Hmm. Let's see if we can... Uh, maybe we'll get lucky. Nope, we pulled off the purity. That's not ideal. Because sometimes it can it can randomly add a uh, attribute, and I think that's what it did there. It was like, hey, I'm going to put ritual range on this. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> All right, there we go. And we'll just get this one growing again. I was really hoping this one would be, like, perfect. Because I was wanting one to speed up uh, the crystal growth. but And actually, I should probably go ahead and fill this up with liquid starlight. Okay, it's actually the next day uh, after the, the last cut. Because uh, my girlfriend got home and then we were watching a show. And, you know, then it's, it's the next afternoon. Uh, so I just let my crystals run while I was doing dinner and, you know, some stuff like that. Uh, now, bear in mind, of course, you could always set up just a basic collector crystal to speed up things uh, until you get your crystals grown. If you're in a rush, I'm never in a rush, so I don't ever, I'm not worried about that. I happen to pop into the test world because I was curious about the angle that I would need for my prism, uh, my crystal prism to make sure that I could hit all six of these slots. And so I wanted to make sure it was in the right spot whenever it came time to set it up. And uh, yeah, the bug still exists with Astral Sorcery where crystal prisms and crystal lenses do nothing. So you cannot transmit starlight through those uh, to put them into an altar or to do like gems or anything like that. I figured it would have been fixed by now because that was like months ago, but unfortunately it's not fixed. So we're not gonna be able to use crystal lenses and crystal prisms until Astro Sorcery gets a fix. Uh, and kind of creates an issue because of course you have uh, within Astro Sorcery, your crystals will try to, uh, they'll basically compete for starlight. So if they're too close, that's why I've spread mine out. Uh, if they're too close, then they'll get nerfed starlight. Um, now I'm still going to keep this future proofed. So all of our good crystals will go on our actual pedestals that we've got set up. And I did add one more pedestal over here because we're going to need one kind of close to the celestial altar in order to power that. So just a heads up, don't bother with your crystal lenses and crystal prisms because they don't do anything. I noticed I didn't make a mention. Um, even though it shows purity and shape here on the crystal lenses, that's the stats that actually matter for the crystal lenses and the crystal prisms. Uh, but if I recall, size will still impact this. So if you have a higher size, you'll get more crystal lenses and crystal prisms per craft, just like it used to be, uh, you know, like in 1.14. So... I just want to make a quick mention of that. Um, but I have been breeding crystals, and I've actually got a few here that are... Uh, well, this one actually is a little low on shape. I need to run it back through to try to get that shape up. Uh, but we have uh, Purity 2, Shape 3, Collection Rate 3, and Focus Decidia and Focus of ECO. Uh, now, I believe, with that being 10 points, I want to test this. If we were to put, like, say this with a size, uh, would that actually do anything? Because I was, um, like I said, I'm thinking 10 is like the cap, uh, but it may have changed. So, uh, yeah, you can see it didn't take the, the size. So 10 is the maximum uh, on those stats. So these crystals here, are they're, they're not obtainable um, because they're 13 on stat. That's what I was thinking, but uh, just wanted to double check. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do at this point, uh, whatever your focus is on your celestial crystals, you have to attune 
to that constellation. Uh, so for example, if I had a focus to Cydia crystal and I instead attuned to VCO, then it would actually just erase that focus and then I would be left with just purity two, shape three, collection rate three. Uh, so it is important that uh, you do attune to whatever you're focused on and if you have multiple focuses, just know that that's kind of a wasted stat uh, to have multiple focuses. And unfortunately, it loves to throw extra focuses on crystals. That's why a lot of my original crystals actually didn't work out uh, for me there. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's grab our Decidia and our VCO paper. We'll just start off with VCO, throw that in our offhand, and just like whenever we attuned our character, we are going to attune our Celestial Crystal. Oh, actually, it's since it's raining, we're not going to be able to do anything until the rain goes away. And actually, just to deal with this, let's go ahead, get ourselves a little bit of Mana Weave. And we're just going to make a Terra Terra Bozo. Uh, we'll probably be automating this at some point. Uh, but that way we can get rid of the rain uh, over in the overworld. Uh, because it's going to be a little obnoxious at the moment. So we'll give him that. And then he'll get rid of the rain. There we go. Okay. And we'll do, we'll do an automation setup. That way we have like full control over... The time of day and over the weather. And then we'll just throw our crystal on there and we'll get that attuned to VCO. And then we're going to do the same thing for Decidia. Uh, let me go ahead and grab the Decidia paper. Uh, now I also have a crystal here that's just a big mess. It's like Purity 2, Shape 3, Avorcia 1, Boots 2. Uh, we're going to actually be attuning that one as well. Um, we'll do that one after our Decidia. And the reason being is because I kind of want to uh, future-proof this so that down the road, when Astro Sorcery kind of gets fixed uh, to where we can use prisms, I don't want to have wasted actual good perfected crystals on hopefully, hopefully temporary setups. Um, and it's something that really shouldn't matter too much to us uh, for the places that I'm going to be setting up the imperfect crystals because it's going to be a very, very small difference uh, in actual, like, speed. And uh, I don't think the city is up tonight. Uh, I'll just hold on to that and we'll go ahead and do the, uh, the one that has boots on it. I think boots is, uh, it's up pretty regularly, right? Yeah, five out of eight. There we go. You can see that Boots is in the sky tonight. Uh, so we'll go ahead, toss that one in. If I had this one uh, leveled up, I would go ahead and do that. But, uh, we're going to use that one here in a second for an example. And then I'll go ahead and get uh, the stuff laid out for Decidia again. Tune to Boots. Tune to Visio, And I just now got the achievement. How weird. Uh, oh, it keeps the focus, but whenever we turn it into a collector crystal, I think is whenever it maybe loses its effect. I was, I'm, I'm fairly certain the focus falls off. We'll find out here, uh, here shortly. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let's pop over. Uh, and for this, you kind of have to use the book because JEI is not going to tell you how to make uh, your collector crystals. If you don't remember, you're going to have to use JEI. Uh, now, I did go ahead and make some illumination powder. I actually made a bunch. Uh, if we take a look in here, I have 480. So I did like, what, a half stack, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead, grab all of this out. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. But we're going to place out our resonating gems, our stardust. And actually, I should probably double up on these. And then we're going to take the crystals that we attuned, so VCO, and we're going to turn these into collector crystals. So let's go ahead and do that. Give that a second to run, and then we're going to do the one that has boots on it. And there we go. There's one, and we completed a quest for that. We're going to go ahead and make another one. Uh, so the, this first one is actually a pretty good one. It's a perfect uh, celestial collector crystal. Uh, so I think what we're going to do, I've got a, I'm, I think I'm going to leave this one here. Um, I'll have to change up the shape of this just slightly, but I can make it work 
uh, and another collector crystal. It's far enough away from the others. It's like 16 blocks now uh, that they have to be spaced out, so it should be fine uh, to just have another one here. Why not have four? Um, so we're going to use the VCO one in this case. The one that's actually good. And we're going to put it down right there. We'll remove that block because it does have to be a space up. Uh, and you can see now particles are starting to come up from the us uh, to the uh, collector crystal, which means that it's getting starlight at this point. Okay, I just had a random crash that uh, threw me back a little bit. Uh, my crystal was still on the altar and uh, it removed this one. So, easy fix. Uh, that's if that's all we lost. Uh, but you can see that the other focus that was on this boots crystal did fall off. So, as you can see, don't, don't, uh, if you can avoid it, try to keep from having uh, multiple focuses on a crystal because you're not going to get any benefit whatsoever for uh, from those. Uh, now this is kind of falling off, and uh, oh, let me let me put this back in since I lost that. And while we're waiting for the starlight to build back up uh, in order to connect this, let's go ahead, come over to here. This should be lined up, uh, and we're going to use this crystal. Now it's not a perfect crystal. That's why we're going to put it here because it's going to be kind of a temporary spot. We're not going to be using a collector multi-block for this one uh, because I'm just using it until hopefully Astral Sorcery gets a fix. Uh, because luckily ATM Spellbound is actively getting updated. Uh, so I'm hoping that, uh, that that's something that whenever it does come out, it quickly gets updated to Spellbound. So let's go ahead and right click our Celestial Collector Crystal. And then we're gonna come down and we're just gonna right click, right click, right click all this iron ore. <clears throat> so that way all of those are linked and those will start turning into star metal uh, it's going to be spreading the starlight between the six uh, now it, granted it would be a little bit faster if we had you know a perfect crystal uh, for the collector here however it's just not worth wasting uh, because we're we're going to cross our fingers and hope that it does get updated so and then we're going to go ahead and take ourselves a bucket of starlight. And we're going to take this one here because we're hoping to get one more on shape. Now it's possible we may get a focus or some other junk. Uh, but we're going to hope that we get one more point of shape because I would like to have three on shape. And we're going to go ahead and throw that in. We're going to right click our collector crystal again. And actually while we're at it, let me just grab cobblestone. I'm going to go ahead and put cobblestone in on these. You'll notice the starlight dissipates. That's because there's a block uh, that's blocking it. It'll it'll still be linked whenever we remove this cobblestone. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and link the collector now to all of those blocks. And that way it can help speed up the crystal growth as well, making it a bit faster. And the reason we want the star metal under it is after every single um, growth update for the crystal, it's going to consume the star metal. It's going to leave the iron ore like right now. And then that collector is going to turn that back into star metal. Uh, and it causes it to basically kind of speed up and just grow better. Um, because the star metal ore gives it a speed increase. But you kind of have to have it linked up because it loses that star metal state. Uh, after every single growth tick. And there's like, what, like eight growth ticks I think that, that these crystals go through. Something like that. But that's going to help our... Uh, our crystal growth just a bit. Uh, so back over to here, you'll notice we still need just a little starlight to make our altar, and hopefully this will solve that. So let's go ahead, let's right click that, right click that, and you can see our starlight now all the way up to here, and we can now craft our final tier of altar. So we're just gonna right click that, we're gonna give it a bit, and then we are going to get our iridescent altar. There is our iridescent altar, let's go ahead, grab that, but there we go, that's how much starlight we have in the iridescent altar. So we could definitely use a little bit more, but I think we probably got enough to craft most things at this point. And at this point, what we need to do, now that we have our new altar, uh, in order to craft a lot of these things, of course, this is the same as it used to be, uh, but the recipe is very, very kind of convoluted at first glance, uh, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, you're going to see a constellation here. This is the most important thing for us to look at. So Lucerna, in this case, I'm actually going to pull up this. 
me just have all of my spectral relays. Uh, let's grab our Lucerna. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and grab our Mara. Between episodes and, and over the coming days, I'm going to try to get uh, crystals attuned to all the different constella constellations because we will need them. Uh, but for right now, let's see if we can get like Lucerna. Hopefully it's in the night sky. Because if so, that would just be wonderful. Oh, there we go. It must have just changed the time of day. Uh, so we do have Lucerna. Let's go ahead and throw in our tool durability. And we're going to get that attuning. And that means we'll have uh, Lucerna out of the way. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the Armara Paper at this point. It's going to be a little bit hard to see where to place Armara while that's running. There we go. There is our attuned Lucerna Crystal. Alright, now let's go ahead and break this off. And let's toss down Armara. Okay, it looks like Armara is not in the night sky, so I'll have to wait on that one. Um, but let's see if Dissidia is up. And I will probably make some more Spectral Relays uh, really, really quickly. I need like two more for that minimum. But we're going to be using these Astral Relays quite a bit. So might as well. I'm going to go ahead and make 15 of them. You will just toss that down. Okay, it looks like... Dissidia is up. So I'm going to go ahead and take our Dissidia Crystal now and go ahead and get this one attuned. So we'll toss that in. And we're going to store these over near the altar. We're going to have just basically a little collection of uh, different attuned crystals. So our Lucerna we'll put into there. And then let me go ahead and grab this. Uh, and this one's going to get turned into a Collector Crystal. Uh, but for right now we'll just leave that right there. Because uh, I actually don't need another Collector Crystal uh, multi-block, and I can get that kind of at my leisure. Oh, let me, uh, actually while I'm while I'm over here, and while I've got this laid out, let me go ahead and just, uh, I kind of want to do them all as Celestial, just because they look better. <laughs> like, they're visually more appealing. Uh, so let's do, yeah, let's do Focus Dissidia, Tune to Dissidia. That sounds good. We'll just throw that in there. And that one will be the one that we keep for uh, our tuned crystal collection. Okay, now uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and craft ourselves an observatory because we're actually going to be needing this. And first up, as far as the constellation that appears here, what we're going to have to do is take and put a, a tuned crystal that has the respective constellation. We're going to have to put that in there. And so it's going to now be... The craft is going to be attuned to Lucerna. And then you're going to see the constellation laid out here on the sooty marble. Um, and then if we take a look at the observatory, it takes eight items, which I think is uh, about the most that we're ever going to need. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to place out some astral relays. It doesn't really matter where these are placed. They just need to be placed on the sooty marble. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You know, you, know you, you don't have to lay them out like in any certain pattern on the sooty marble or anything like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and just put the items in here uh, and lay out for the items doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be uh, symmetrical or anything like that. You can have more astral relays than what you need. Uh, you know, none of that's really important. And let me go ahead and get a bit of this wrapped it up. So we hopefully won't have to make any more. <clears throat> Throw that in there. And then we're also going to need the items shown here, just like normal, uh, normal crafting. And of course, this would be used for the uh, refraction table. But we probably won't do a whole lot with the refraction table. Of course, we did a whole lot with it back on uh, Sevtech. But on there, it was really, really good. And on here... Honestly, enchantments are super easy to get better than what uh, Stellar Refraction Table would give us. Alright, and now we can get our observatory laid out, and it is now craftable. We should have enough starlight, honestly, to craft pretty much anything. Even though it's not capping out um, this pack, it's not necessary, really. Um, because I don't think there's any custom recipes that require like a ton of starlight. Which is good, because Astral's kind of busted at the moment. Oh no, it's actually wanting... these laid out. I was thinking, it's been a little while, I was thinking that uh, it didn't really matter. But uh, it's wanting 
Stardust here. Okay. So, yeah. Wait to put your items down until uh, it asks for them, probably. There we go. There we go. Now we got the order right. Uh, I was thinking that uh, the order actually didn't matter. That you could just lay them all out ahead of time, but... Uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. It's been a little while, so... Uh, there is our observatory. Okay, now let's pop over here. It looks like, uh, no, I don't want Dissidia. What I actually want is Armara. So let's pull this up. Okay, Armara's up now. So I'm gonna go ahead and attune a crystal to that really quickly. And then we're gonna pop out with our observatory. Now, before you go out, make sure that you grab four papers, Ulteria, Vorex, Alcara, and Jellu. Um, actually, I'm gonna put this down here because I've got these attuned already and our Mar, but make sure you get these four papers uh, and just like before you can just use your blank constellation papers if you picked up extras um, to get those and they'll update to uh, they'll update to what you need uh, we're going to be using this next episode I don't think we have time this episode because I'd like to get the observatory up and going uh, okay and then we're going to pop out uh, let's go off like over here and we're going to set up our observatory, we're going to jump inside of it, and then we get to scroll around looking for stars, basically. Uh, generally, yeah, there we go. Generally, if you just move through pretty quickly, uh, you'll, you'll notice them because they do stick out. And you're going to hold shift to basically stop your screen, that way you get your mouse. Uh, and then you're just going to do, just like we did before, you're going to draw these constellations out. This one, I believe, is Ulteria, just like that. There we go. Advancement made. Is there anybody out there? And we're going to scroll around looking for additional faint constellations. There's three more that we could potentially get. Sounds like I'm being attacked by phantoms. Uh, oh, we do have one more. Okay. Yeah, I'm being attacked by phantoms at the moment. Great. Uh, this one is Jello. like that and then i'm just going to quickly go through probably not going to be any more i don't usually notice more than like two in a night in my experience but uh yeah i'm not really seeing any more um but generally i just move the mouse pretty quick you'll notice the stars because uh, the way they move kind of in the foreground um, they're pretty easy to notice even when you're moving through pretty quickly. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll pop off of <laughs> we'll pop off of that, and we'll grab it. And basically, I'll just need to uh, come back out and see if I can find uh, Alcara and Vorux. Um, and I think I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode, so I think we're going to end this one out here. Uh, next episode, when we come back, we're going to be wrapping up our like main astro sorcery work. Um, so next episode, we're going to redo our perks and go over that. Uh, so then we'll spend the rest of the episode doing an automation setup, uh, that we've been wanting to do for a bit related to all the modium. And then the following episode, we're actually going to be going back to the abyss because there's some things that have changed, uh, with the abyss mod since, you know, the big update that broke all of our stuff. Uh, so we're going to spend an episode going back to the abyss and going over it because it's a, it's a bit different now. Uh, also, one thing I wanted to point out that I noticed uh, between episodes, my paintings, the ones that I really liked that were too tall and I used them like everywhere, that painting is actually gone uh, from the the list of paintings that could come up. I'm, I'm not sure if that was Abyss mod that added that uh, or what it was, but apparently the last update broke that painting and removed it. So a little bit unfortunate there. Uh, so just a heads up, you're going to notice all those paintings like down in the occultism area are gone. So I've got to figure out maybe a different banner or something uh, to take the place of where those paintings used to be. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. And I'll see you guys then.